Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording with a super quick tip here for you today. I am gonna to show you one explosive tip for a more hard-hitting chorus. All right, before we jump in, as always, let me play you what the final mix is sounding like, and I'm gonna jump back a little bit here so you can hear the explosive tip we're gonna talk about going into our chorus section. I don't have it named here, but this marker is our chorus three, I believe. Let me play you the chorus as it stands, and then I'm gonna mute out this one <laughs> explosive tip, and you can see how it changes the impact on the downbeat of our chorus. So here is the final mix as it stands. <laughs> It's a subtle element. It's not something you hear or that you can pick out. Well, of course you hear it, but it's not something you can pick out in the mix, but when it is gone, you 100% will miss it. Take a listen one more time, going into our chorus section. Not quite as impactful, right? So what are we adding here? We are adding an explosion. That is why and it's, it's an explosive tip. Let me zoom in here so we can focus in on this explosion. So let me play you this explosion by itself. It's pretty low in the mix. It's down at about negative 12. Um, that's why it's not something you notice. Uh, just listening to the mix by itself, but again, when it's gone, you miss it because it is adding that impact on the downbeat of our choruses. Let me solo up uh, just the explosion here. You can hear what it sounds like. So it has some low end beef to it. it that gives us a little bit more impact on our low end, but it also has that kind of high cymbal noise, which contributes a little bit more energy to our drums on the cymbal hit, which emphasizes that downbeat on our chorus. Let me play you just the drums going into the chorus section, and I'll play it to you with and without this explosion in there. I'm also gonna take out the uh, reverse cymbal. That sounds a little bit weird without the explosion. These two elements kind of work together to create a rev up and then explosion on our downbeat into our chorus. This is just the drums first without the explosion and then I'll put it in. You can hear how we have a little bit more impact or a little bit more explosiveness going into the downbeat on our chorus. Now one more time, I'm gonna throw that explosion back in and the reverse symbol too. One more time. Isolated there with the drums, you really hear that you hear that explosion and you feel it as well. But inside the mix, it's not something you wanna be able to pick out and be like, oh, they put an explosion there on the downbeat of the chorus in a more organic song like this. This is, you know, straightforward uh, rock and roll, drums, bass, guitars, ripping at it. You don't want to hear some kind of, you know, electronic explosion element like that. That can turn off a lot of listeners, especially if they're, you know, just listening to, uh, you know, classic rock type music like this. You don't want to hear an electronic element like that, but you want to feel it. That's why it's tucked back so far. We could bring it up and you know, so it's to a point where you feel it, but that would take some listeners out and it might bring a little bit too much uh, heaviness in our low end. One more time, I'll pull it up a little bit too far and we'll tuck it back to kind of this same area. And you can hear how we lose some of that kind of unrealistic element of the explosion, putting that in a song like this, but we still retain that feel and that impact on the downbeat of our chorus. So we'll start where it's at and then I'll pull it up and we'll bring it back down, tuck it back to where it feels right.
kind of did all the extremes there, went way too loud with it, kind of brought it back easy down to where I had it, where it feels right, and then I went below that too, well below that. So you could hear, if we go too far down, uh, we lose the impact as well as the noticeable effects of the explosion. You can hear when it's way up there, it's very noticeable and it takes you out of the mix a little bit, takes you out of the song, um, and it takes away from the realism in the song, right? A bunch of real musicians in a room playing together. Uh, if you're hearing an explosion on the downbeat of the chorus, it takes you out of that aspect a little bit, and it does add a little bit too much heaviness to our low end. If we go up that far with the volume, then we have to start pulling up the high pass a little bit too much, and then it doesn't add that much impact as it's higher. It's kind of just cymbal noise uh, joining in with uh, the downbeat on the drums. One more time, where it's sitting, final time all the way through, you can hear that downbeat on the chorus with the explosion in there. Super quick one today, just a small but explosive tip for you. I hope that was helpful for you. Before you go, I do have a free gift that I want to give you for sticking with me here till the end of the video. This is my seven step mixing checklist. It will guide you through the entire mixing process, step by step to get you professional and radio ready mixes without the guesswork and without the hassle. Thank you so much for watching. You can download that free guide using the link in the description and I will see you in the next video.